Pi Network is a very interesting cryptocurrency that came out in 2019 and has grown excessively since then. They've just crossed over 25 million engaged pioneers, which is no easy task. The idea is great, but the app gets a little bit annoying. It always wants you to mine every 24 hours and I get a notification on my phone along with all the other notifications I get on my phone. So I decided to install it on my desktop. Pi does have a node that you can install on Windows, but you still need a mobile device to mine. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to install the Pi Network app on your Windows 10 desktop. And we're going to be using an Android emulator to do that. So let's get started. So here we are at the Windows 10 desktop. And the first thing that we're gonna be doing is downloading a Android emulator. The Android emulator that I'm gonna use is called LD Player. You can find it at ldplayer.net and I'll put the link for that in the description below. Now this isn't the only one out there. There's a whole bunch of them out there. There's Bluestacks, there's Mimu, there's Knox, and obviously LD Player that I'm using right now. And those are just a few examples. The reason why I'm using LD Player is it's somewhat lightweight. Most of these do have bloatware injected in them. And they also have some additional software that they're trying to install, like security software or antivirus software, which is very common because uh, that's how they make them free is they get paid for these type of things. Anyways, we're going to be using LD Player in this example. So I'm going to go ahead and download the player right now. And there we go. I'll open it up. Say yes to the prompt. So we get the prompt here. And I'm just going to minimize my browser so you can see it properly. And if you want to change the default path, say your main drive, your C drive doesn't have enough space, you can click on the setup path and then click on browse. And then you can choose a different drive or directory that suits you better. In this example, I'm going to be using the same path. We have the read and agree selected, and then we're going to click on install. So this is part of the installation process is where it's trying to install additional software. I do not want it. You don't have to install it. So you can click on reject. And the same thing for AVG antivirus. Although this is a good application, I just don't want it on my computer. Click on reject and it'll go ahead and install on your computer. This might take a couple of minutes. I'll skip to the end of the installation process. Okay, so LD player is now complete. Uh, the installation process is done and you can see that we have some shortcut icons on the top and we're ready to start it up. So we can click on the yellow button over here and let it start up. Okay, and here we are at the main screen for LD Player. Uh, a bunch of apps are already preloaded, like these games that you find here right now. And you can see that we're running version 4.0.68. Uh, this is uh, the latest version as of November 2021. So now what we're ready to do is install the Pi app. I'm going to go into the system app section over here, and I'm going to click on the Google Play Store. And what you need to do for the Google Play Store is sign in. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And now I'm going to type in the password. Okay, we're just going through the last steps of setting up the Google Play Store with my Gmail account. Just got to accept the changes, and it'll load it up. All right, so now we're at the Play Store and we can go ahead and install the Pi app. So I can click on type in Pi Network Go. And here is the Pi app and we can go ahead and install that. Okay, and we can see that it's been installed. So if you go to the main screen, you'll notice that an icon will pop up here for Pi. So we have the Pi app over here and I'm just gonna double click on it and it's gonna launch in, in a vertical mode and I'll have to just type in my information to get it started. It's gonna be like signing into your phone, but we're gonna be using a computer. The emulator is the exact same setup as if you're running on your phone. And I'm gonna be signing in with my Facebook account. And it's gonna to wanna to go to the Facebook website to authenticate who you are. And once you're here, you're gonna to wanna to type in your, your username and your password. So I already have this running on a phone right now, so it wants to authenticate again. I'm gonna click on continue. I'll be removing it from my phone. I'll be primarily using it on my desktop. So I'll be using the Pi Network app from here. So here we go, we're in the desktop. So we have it up and running. We have the Pi app running on our Windows 10 desktop using an Android emulator. We'll get the notifications and everything else as if we would on our phone, except it's gonna pop up inside the emulator itself. So you're up and running. And now it's, might, depending on your lifestyle, this might be an easier way for you to do it. For me, I get a little bit annoyed with a lot of notifications and pop-ups on my phone and I'm in and out of my computer less frequently. So it doesn't bother me as much as if it, if it does here and I have more control. So anyway, that's the reason why I'm doing it this way, but it's great for other people if they find this to be an easier method. So I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. If you have any questions, you go ahead and put them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. If you enjoyed this video and you wanna see others like it, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.